Hello everyone, this is Banter Bill, and welcome to Twilight Arbor Forward Forward Dungeon Guide. This is not a speedrunning guide, but a guide moment for those who are new to the dungeon or those who need a refresher. In terms of class composition, I recommend at least one guardian. As you can see, the guardian staff is excellent at clearing these volatile blossoms. So starting off, we're just going to wait for our teammate to come in, but he takes so long that we decide to move forward anyway. I, cho I chose my Necromancer for this path because the last boss requires a bit of survivability. My Necromancer has more survivability than my Warrior, who I used on the up path. Those walls we just passed will knock you down. So I recommend you bring a stability skill, or that the Guardian use stand your ground or retreat. These halts will also knock you down, so again, either dodge or stability, or block through them. Once everyone's here, we start attacking these overgrown vines. That AoE attack will knock you down, so I recommend dodging through it, or using your stability skill there. If you are a range class, you should stay away from the melee players. The spit seems to be attracted to range classes. I think the fight is easier at range. If you can organize it, you want to have four players at melee and one at range to attract the spit. But honestly, all five players at range in, in melee is fine. So we're just making the circuit, attacking these nightmare vines. I use my Death Shroud 4 on the way to the next mine to clear some of those Volatile Blossoms. I can outrun a centaur. Our engineer didn't stick with us and I go to revive him, but unfortunately I don't make him time. If you do go down, you can rally off the Volatile Blossom. So try to do that, it is very hard to revive someone when they're spit flying everywhere. Once five of the Nightmare Vines are dead, you want to ignore the last one that's up and go straight towards the middle Champion Nightmare Vine. Again, I recommend everyone stay at melee or one person at range if you can do that kind of organization. Alright, we beat the Nightmare Vine. Make sure to collect your champ chest and the event chest. If you go down, you can revive at the waypoint that just spawned, or you can wait for your teammates. Hey, the and I've butchered him. I promise you, your death will not be in vain. There are two paths. Which one shall I open? Since we're doing forward forward, we choose <laughs> let's go forward. Alright, going forward, I like to run straight through the middle, clearing all the Volatile Blossoms there. You can either wait for your Guardian, or I just go ahead and clear them with Death Shroud 4. Then we're just going to make a circuit and kill these archers. These archers do use projectiles, so reflex skills are useful. These guys are not at all, everyone can fight in melee, or if you, if you feel uncomfortable in melee, you can use range as well. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through these next five archers, since they're exactly the same as the first one. Occasionally, the archers will pop some conditions on you, so condition and removal is also helpful. Thank <laughs> you. 
All right, then once all five this archers are dead, I'm going to choose Ford again, since we're doing Ford for it. There are two paths. Which one shall I open? Here, we're going to skip the fish in this water part. And once we emerge from the water, we're going to veer towards the right to ignore the ads in the middle of this open area as well. I could outrun a centaur. Most groups now fight this champion because he does drop a champion bag. I like to lure him to the left of the bridge to get away from the ads that could come over if we don't lure him. He is relatively easy. He can pack a punch at melee range, so if you're a bit on the light armor side, you may want to stay at range. He also drops some weakness, so condition and removal is helpful. Alright, on this next part, we're going to fight some archers in bubbles. The bubbles block projectiles, so you can use a ranged weapon if it's not a projectile ranged weapon. Uh, that includes things like Guardian Staff, the Necro Axe, Mesmer Great Sword. You saw that I just rolled through the bubble? You cannot actually evade through the bubble. If you touch the bubble, you will instantly go down. The way we got to the bubble is by using the Guardian's Aegis. So if you are a Guardian, you want to pop Retreat or your F3 skill to help your teammates through the first bubble. So I like to block through the first bubble and then use the teleporters to get through the rest. Unfortunately, my teammates don't come with me on this one, so I have to solo this guy for a while. My engineer teammate is just standing outside the bubble using range attacks, and none are getting through, so please don't be that person. Either take the teleporters in, or use a non-projectile range attack. Like here, I'm just using my axe, and that can get through. Coming up is what I consider the hardest part of this path. We're going to skip a bunch of mobs that can hurt you a lot. Again, we want to follow our guardian through. He's going, to, he's going to pop retreat to avoid these wolves. Again, these wolves will knock you down. So retreat or stability or something to get by those wolves is very helpful. Then we take a quick break here to make sure all the teammates are grouped together. And once they are, we're going to wait for our guardian to use stand your ground or retreat and then run through these guys as well. If there is a Nightmare Fort Knight, then he will knock you down. Our thief just used Shadow Refuge there, but he didn't tell any of us that he was using it. So if you are a thief, just inform the group that you're going to use Shadow Refuge, and you can use that. Again, as a reminder, if, you, if a thief does use Shadow Refuge, make sure to stay in the refuge until the house is gone. If you do go down, you can try to rally off of Blossom, all that, although that may be difficult to do, since the Guardian Perhaps. may have cleared all of them on his first run through, so try to stick close to the Guardian. Alright, you can wait here to rest up and wait for your skill recharge. And then, on this next run through, you want to stick as far right as you can. Right here is the last group of ads. Make sure to pop stability if you have it, and then we're going to run through a bunch of volatile blossoms. If you do happen to go down, try to get as far through on this path as you can. Even if you die, your allies may be able to revive you if you get far enough away from those mobs. And of course, if you do go down, you can rally off a volatile blossom if they're still up. Alright, we're going to take a quick break as here as well. 
If you are the first one here and your group isn't with you, don't venture too far on this path or you could spawn the dogs. And while the dogs aren't difficult if you're running past them, they may be difficult if you're the only person there. So I just stay behind my guardian, wait for him to clear the Voltal Blossoms, and I just run through. And our thief here again pops Shadow Refuge without telling us, so it's not as useful as it could have been. Time to do some real damage. Then we're just gonna keep running until we make it down all the way. Now we're off to fight Laurent. I recommend pulling his ads back here and then fighting Laurent in the middle. You didn't have in to terms of priority order on the ads, the I would go Knight, Cultist, Archer. To wipe out your the enemy. Knight has a knockdown attack, which you want to get rid of ASAP. The Cultist can you speed up time, and the Archer is relatively weak, so that's why we take her last. last against her charms, you know. So when fighting the knight, you probably want to use your stability or your blocks to avoid his initial knockdown attack. Pity you weren't more clever. Perhaps I would have found a better place for you in my ranks. Kill her! I feel good. So our guardian actually manages to lure all the ads into a single place. So we're able to AOE most of them down at the same time, so that is very helpful. Of course, the Guardian has to be able to take most of that damage. He goes down there, but thankfully he's able to rally. Alright, we take down the last of the ads, then we're fighting Laurent. Laurent can binding you, which is devastating because it both immobilizes you and puts bleeds on you. So I recommend condition removal for this fight. I also recommend that you fight him in the middle. That both keeps him from resetting and you're able to rally off a Voltal Blossom if you go down. There aren't as many Voltal Blossoms on this side. Fortunately, one of my teammates didn't really listen to my suggestion to pull him to the middle, so we fight him back here for most of the time. If you get stuck in a binding route, Either use condition removal or attack the binding root. And then we take down the Ront, and we're about to fight the final boss. For the final boss, I recommend condition removal and stability. You can you can fight this final boss completely at melee. I usually use a mix of melee and range. We like to start the final boss from the back. His initial stomp where he takes in Bavina will instantly down you. So I would wait back here and then when the nightmare tree becomes attackable, start attacking it from the back. Bavina will spawn ghost trees. I would just ignore the trees and try to take down the boss as quickly as possible. The ghost trees will immobilize you and knock you down, which is why I recommend the stability and condition removal. If you see someone go down, I would try to pick them up ASAP. It's hard to rally off of these ghost trees. While you can kill the ghost trees, I think they would just respawn once you kill them. In terms of the nightmare tree, he won't hurt you after that initial stomp attack where he absorbs the vena. So if feel free to kite around the Nightmare Tree. Alright, and then once you beat the Nightmare Tree, you are done.
he does not drop a champion chest, and there is no event chest after you beat him, so feel the free punishment. to switch to an alt. And that's it. Thanks for watching, guys.